Got my team wolf on representing for the 80s babies. I think I threw my shoulder out doing that. What just happened here? It's dark as I'm sitting And it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun The salt of the earth Fire burning and water dripping How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless The blood that doesn't need a blood She is the wildest woman and let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome to my spot, room 303. I just want to say thank you for all of my returnees and for those who are here for the very first time. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up. Listen up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're really feeling the content, go ahead and share that link for me. All right, here on The Wireless Woman, you know that class is now in session and it's time to call the roll. Today, I'll be calling myself to the front of the class for read aloud. Today, as I stated before, I will be at the front of the class to read aloud. But before we get into today's content, I would like to encourage you all to follow me on my social media platforms. You can go to the About tab on my YouTube page and all of my social media accounts are listed there. I will have different content on each platform. So my TikToks will not be the same as my Instagram posts. So I really encourage you to actually follow each one of those platforms just to see the different facets and avenues of what the wireless woman is and what I will be doing. Also, my website, thewirelesswoman.com will be going live soon. I will be planning the wireless woman we treat for February 2022. I will be posting the detailed events and the sign up on my website. That website will be the place you can go to obtain your merchandise. You always see me wearing wireless woman merchandise and that's going to be available on the website. You'll also be able to see blogs and connect with different events that I'm a part of. And for people who are having events in the Charlotte area and surrounding, within I would say about a 30 mile radius of North Charlotte, make sure to email me at admin at the wireless woman with details of your events that you're having. I would definitely love to come out and be a part of anything positive that's going on in the community. One of the central pillars of the wireless woman mission is community building. So I look forward in advance to beginning to build relationships with those that are already out in the community doing a lot of great things and hopefully being able to provide some support and exposure as well. So thank you in advance for those that are sharing those that are sharing events and content with me to help me enrich my channel. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to tell you what I'm wearing today. I have on strength courage and wisdom it's the eye here and i know the christians are gonna say that's demonic but you know the bible says that if the eye is light 
then the whole body is light. But if the eye is dark, then the whole body will be filled with darkness. And I think sometimes when we're in the pursuit of trying to get the darkness out, we don't realize that if we would just let the light in, that light casts out darkness. That's what enlightenment is. When you're seeking the light where you can find light, knowledge, wisdom, love, it automatically drives out darkness. It's like an astringent. It's its own antidote. Light is the antidote to darkness. So today's episode is called, oh, is the wireless woman subtitle? Why do we care? As an introduction, my name is Debbie Nikki. I am a Charlotte, North Carolina native. I am still here. I live in the university area. That's something I want people to know because I do plan on being very, very active in my community and working however I can to connect people who are doing different things in the community to really see if we can begin to get some traction. As I've said before, I really believe in microcosm, macrocosm, and therefore there has to be these grassroots community movements if we're really going to begin to amass political, social, and economic power. Power is a product of people. Power to the people! And therefore, we have to begin to organize people. And the smallest foundational element of people are communities, families, cities. And I really want to be a pioneer here in my city of making sure that we can bring about effective, productive, cooperative, long-lasting change. I am what they call a milestone or geriatric millennial. Got my team wolf on representing <laughs> for the 80s babies. <laughs> so in my former life, when I was not Joan of Arc, I have been a singer, songwriter, dancer, choreographer, and author. These books on this shelf back here are actually mine. Well, some of them. I've got When the Chicken Heads Come to Roost up there. Good book. You should read it. But I have my first two books, Safety and Lovers and Just in Case, up there. You actually can't buy these anymore. I think I'll relist them. If, if people really show an interest for them, I'll relist them. I do have two active books, which are God Face and Pharaoh Forever. And if I don't get a follow-up to my Pharaoh Forever Part 1 out soon, somebody might make good on those death threats I've received. So I am in the work from a new book. So if you haven't gathered from all that information, I do a little bit of everything. Um, I am a somewhat self-proclaimed life coach, too. It's kind of weird. My inbox is full of a lot of very weird questions that people ask me advice about odd things. So I welcome that. I don't know how much longer I can take all those inbox questions though. That may be something in the future that I have to start charging for. I am an alum of the illustrious HBCU, Fayetteville State University. Added to check Bronco Pride. I am a mother of three glorious children, two teenagers, and an eight-year-old. And that explains all this gray hair in my head, okay? Have kids, they said. It'll be fun, they said. I am a member of the first and second wives club. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the wireless woman was born. She wasn't created. She was born, actually reborn from ashes and dust that was thrown on me by tons of haters. So the wireless woman is an actual superhero. It's my superhero alter ego. She is somewhat of a talisman. She does actually have superpowers.
So I honestly believe that millennials have lived about four lifetimes over the course of their lifespan. You know, we lived in a time when you rode bikes and skates and skinned up your knee and you had to actually go down to your friend's house to see them or you would call them on a house phone where their parents would pick up and potentially could be listening to your conversation on the other line. You know, we went from the industrial age to the digital age, the information age, to the new media age. We're more intelligent than we've ever been, but we're more ignorant than we've ever been because we've lost touch with reality. You know, the reality is virtual. The food is fake. The news is fake. And so I found that I was losing myself. And what was so scary about losing myself was I didn't know where I had lost myself. Like I didn't even know where to go back and pick it up. I may have been having something like a midlife crisis. I think the pandemic brought up that feeling for everyone. I think everyone found themselves collectively in a crisis moment. The pandemic was just chaos for me. And so I could not go out. I had to go inside. And so for me, I just decided to embrace it and to choose it as opposed to resisting it. A little bit after the quarantine started, I actually went into isolation, which isolation and quarantine are two totally different things. One you choose and the other one you do not choose. I chose to use events that were overcoming my coping mechanism to actually create something like a cocoon. And I emerged from my isolation with superpowers. Um, I mean, that's, that's facts. I have been a person for mostly all of my life that's really followed a lot of traditions, a lot of religion, um, a lot of the beaten path. Um, all my life was pretty much planned out for me, and that made it pretty easy to know what to do and what not to do. From a young age, I could hear the audible voice of God. I started hearing the audible voice of God around 19 when I was in college. People that actually went to college with me during that time could probably tell you there was a very significant change in me. However, I stopped hearing the voice of God during the pandemic at 39, 20 years later. And that was a very difficult thing for me. It's a thing that makes you feel like you're at the wrong place at the wrong time in life. That year of isolation was kind of like a factory reset for me. But what happened was I started to search for God in places I had never searched for God before. I started to look for God inside myself. I started to look for God in nature. I stopped confining God to this book. So I took a trip to the mountains and I had taken that trip to the mountains because I didn't intend to come back. There's a lot of things you can't say on YouTube, so I'm not going to say what I went to the mountains for. I'm just going to say that I didn't intend to come back. But I sat by a river, and I watched a butterfly land on a rock. And there were fish that were swimming upstream as the river was flowing downstream. And then this couple came along and they started a bonfire. And I looked into that fire and I felt the warmth of it. And for several hours, I just belonged. I just felt like I belong here. And I began to hear a voice, a voice that I had lost. And it wasn't the voice of God that I had heard so many times, this exterior voice, this booming voice, this still small voice. It was coming from within me. The voice that I heard was my own gut. It was my own intuition. It was a voice that I had ignored for so long. And I had substituted that voice 
with pastors and sermons and scriptures. But you have to remember those books of wisdom belong to their time, their culture, their region. And they were written by people that were inspired through their experiences with God. And then I started to see that everything I knew about God, I had either been taught about or learned about third hand from someone else. So I really embraced for the first time the opportunity to know God for myself to be an extension of God. And I know it's going to sound heretical to people, but I realized that I could be God. You know, that some of the things that Jesus was talking about and teaching us about how we could really embrace a lineage, a likeness of God. I realized I had been limiting myself in a lot of ways. So during that year of isolation, for the first time, I really began to connect with nature. I was hiking and gardening and grounding. I began to do things that I did when I was a kid, taking my shoes off and walking in the grass and dancing in the rain. And, you know, I just really began, began to come alive again. For the first time in my life, I ate real food. Like cucumbers don't even taste like what they taste like in the grocery store. Like these cucumbers, they were crisp and they were sweet. They tasted like apples. Like they had that crisp, juicy, like it's nothing like it. And gardening was something that helped me to balance out my hormones because there's a, there's a connection between the earth and the body. Man came from the earth, and when you put your hands into it, when you put your feet into it, when you bring something from the earth, I mean, it's next to godliness. I don't think there's been any greater joy for me than gardening except for bringing forth children. I mean, because bringing food out of the ground is it's very next to childbirth. And I do believe that women were created to cultivate earth. I believe, I believe in ways that I can't prove right now that all of that is connected to being able to give life. I think if infertile women or women who are struggling with sterility would garden, I, I think there's a pheromone or hormone released in that. I'm going to do more research on that and develop some episodes around this particular phenomenon. I believe that just bringing forth life, just watching that process, like these little flowers came up on the vines and I'm like, okay, those flowers are going to be the fruit. They're not. You get flowers and then the fruit comes from like this whole separate place and just eating food that still had seeds in it. It was... It helped me to wake up my mind. It helped me to wake up my spirit. It just set me free from, it just set me free from so much bondage that I was living in. I mean, religious, spiritual, physical, economic, <laughs> economic bondage, you know, when I really began to rest in my femininity. I began to manifest things like never before. For the first time in a long time, I had money. Like, I ain't going to say it was like abundance in abundance, but my cup was definitely not empty. It was running over. <laughs> and I believe all of these things are connected. And it was getting unplugged that helped me to be unbothered. And being unbothered caused me to be unleashed. Once you are comfortable and at home in you, there's nothing really that anybody can say or do that's going to change you molecularly, inherently, like social media does. Social media really changes you on a molecular chemical level in ways that you may not yet be ready to accept because the addiction of it is so deep at this point. It's a part of our culture and society. And I know how hypocritical it is to get on social media and condemn social media. However, there are going to be times in the future where people will say that I did this for cloud or cloud chasing. 
but I didn't. And that was evidenced by the fact that I rejected and denied doing this very thing. The year that I spent away from social media was the most therapeutic time of my life. I had so much growth, abundance, and manifestation. I did not have to come back for anybody. I didn't even have to share any of this. But when I did finally hear the voice of God again, that was what he said. He said, you have to tell everyone what you know now. And that's what I'm doing. This <laughs> is being obedient. Because honestly, social media is an entanglement. And it says that when you're free from the yoke of bondage, be not entangled again. And I think that I can come, I think that, and I think that I am really a person who can come back now and say that because I've gone that mile that a lot of people don't want to go. All right. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Who is the wireless woman? Part one. Make sure you come back next week for part two and the conclusion of this episode. Go ahead, as always, like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. If you really felt the content, go ahead and share that link.